Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you've all been enjoying the Mighty Little Bird after it's been released. And I wanted to address something that I get asked literally all the time with all of my OH6 and AH6 helicopter videos, which is regarding the control setup, regarding the curves, and how to set up the controls in a way that gives you maximum precision when it comes to flying these helicopters. Quite frankly, any helicopter in DCS world. So. Today, I thought I would share with you some of my settings and give you some tips as to how to improve your control setup to have the ultimate helicopter flying precision. Now, first things first, no one setting will ever cater for every single user, every single joystick, and every single home cockpit setup. It's literally not possible. So with that said, let's try and identify the things that are important and how you can tune your personal joystick in order to be able to extract the maximum precision out of your helicopter experience. It's very important to note that if you're using a force feedback joystick base like I am, I'm using FF Beast, it's absolutely incredible for flying helicopters and quite frankly, everything. Um, feel free to check it out in the description below. Uh, but if you're using a regular spring-loaded joystick, then there are some key differences that really need to be taken into account. A force feedback joystick can obviously be trimmed uh, into a new neutral position and it, the joystick will physically move in your hand to a new neutral point which will then not coincide with the center of the axes in your control setup and that is a very key and important point to note because anybody who's using a spring loader joystick even when you trim your helicopter your joystick will still remain in the center which will coincide with the center of the axis and that means that you can play with the curves in a slightly different way compared to somebody who is using a force feedback joystick base like I am. And before we talk about the curves, let me tell you about the absolute most important thing with regards to tuning your axes in the control setup. So unlike an airplane in a helicopter, at least in my personal opinion, 99.99% .99 of the time, you as a pilot do not need to deflect the cyclic to its maximum deflection and therefore you as a sim user can actually improve the amount of stability that you have flying a helicopter when you don't have the really long extension that a real pilot will have on the cyclic. In my particular case, I'm only using a 20 centimeter extension between the gimbal and the joystick itself, uh, which is less than half of what the real helicopter has, which effectively means that if I move the stick even a little bit, the amount of output that the helicopter will then respond to is a lot more than what a similar movement made by a real pilot on the cyclic of the little bird would have. So what it means is the helicopter is way more twitchy and way more sensitive with our control setups that don't have a long extension. So the way to get around that before we start talking about curves, which is true, you can definitely use a curve to flatten it out around that center point. But using a curve, obviously, you lose that linearity of the control response. Whereas saturation is one way where you could easily improve the amount of stability that you have, or let's say less sensitivity within your control inputs um, by reducing the saturation. Now, if you have a look at my pitch and roll axes here on the right hand side of the screen, um, the only reason I made the yaw axis so small is because there's literally no change. It's a one to one. Um, there is no curve, there's no saturation, but with regards to the pitch and roll, you'll notice that there's some saturation. And what it means is that my maximum deflection of the joystick will not result in the maximum possible control output that the helicopter is capable of. Now, in an aircraft, I would never have such a compromise because I believe almost no matter what aircraft you fly, whether it's a heavy or a fighter jet, at some point you will probably need maximum deflection of the control stick uh, in order to be able to fly that aircraft at some certain point, some certain regime. Whereas in the helicopter, 
99.99% of the time, I really don't think it's necessary, and I think most helicopter pilots wouldn't be deflecting the cyclic maximum, um, or even if you're flying the helicopter relatively aggressively, even if it's a little bird. Now, somebody might argue with me, and that's fair enough, if you think that you do need maximum deflection in a helicopter uh, at some point during the flight, then fair enough. Then, obviously, my approach here won't work for you, but... The advantage of having reduced the saturation on the axes is that it gives you a little bit more fidelity. The aircraft will feel less twitchy and less sensitive. Now, I wish I could actually reduce it even further. But again, there is a compromise because obviously you do want to have um, an aircraft that is relatively responsive when you do deflect the cyclic a fair amount. But at the same time, the issue with the helicopter is that in the hover, it's very sensitive and you want to make it as stable as possible because a real helicopter pilot will have a long stick extension or a long cyclic extension, which will mean that a small input on the cyclic will result in a relatively small output in terms of what the helicopter does. But for us, especially for those of us that don't have long stick extensions, in my case is 20 centimeters, in your case it might be 5 centimeters, um, you will have a very, very twitchy helicopter on your hands unless you're prepared to do something about it. And there's obviously two things that you can do. It's either the saturation or the curves, but I would always urge everybody to start with a little bit of saturation because in my opinion, you don't need a full control deflection in the pitch or the roll axis. Now you can reduce it even further. The only reason I really wanted to limit it in pitch is because when you do an auto rotation, the cyclic does need to come back a fair amount. And then you really don't want to run out of cyclic if you really need it for whatever adjustment, especially as you're getting into an auto rotation. And that's probably the most limiting factor for me in terms of reducing the saturation. Because if it wasn't for that, I think I'd be prepared to actually even reduce it even more and then have even less sensitivity, especially when you're around in that hover. Now in the roll axis, you can see that I've got a little bit of a curve as well. Um, the curves are something you can play around with, especially if you don't have a force feedback joystick. You can add a little bit of a curve there uh, just to flatten it out around the center where small minute corrections just around the center of the axes will result in relatively small and stable control outputs. But in general, my advice to you is every single control setup is different. My number one suggestion is take off a little bit of saturation on the pitch and roll axes. After that, if you feel like you want to play around a little bit with the curves, uh, then feel free to do so. Just don't make them too aggressive because then the transition point between which your input becomes uh, not very sensitive to being extremely sensitive at some point in the middle of the range uh, might throw you off a little bit. So just always try to have a sort of gentle curve if you can avoid it. But then of course, I will say that every single person out there is different and what you're used to is different and what you perceive to be easy and believable and predictable might be a little bit different as well. It is a thing of personal preference. And in this particular case, there is no point in trying to chase that perfect realism because we're not gonna have it. With our control setups, they're not the same as what a real helicopter is. Unless you have a force feedback joystick with exactly the correct length extension, then really you're gonna be compromising your flight control inputs one way or another. So you might as well do something that works well for you. After you've settled on something that you feel might work for you, I just suggest practice, practice, practice. Literally just non-stop practice. Uh, the helicopter pilots that fly the little birds in real life spend thousands of hours uh, just shooting at things because the helicopter is a difficult helicopter to fly. It is not a forgiving helicopter, the AH-6 Little Bird. Uh, it will get away from you. It is a twitchy and sensitive helicopter in real life as well. And it requires the pilot to be quite literally on the ball all the time. So there is just no way around it. You just have to keep practicing and keep trying and that's it. Although I will mention that if you watch a lot of videos of little birds operating in real life, these guys smash these helicopters onto the ground. Uh, whether they are flying rangers or delta forces in or out incursion or, or excursions, or even if they are just little birds coming in to rearm uh, on the FARP, then 
they generally aren't very smooth the way they land helicopters. So in my videos, yes, I try to land smoothly because why the heck not? It's fun, it's challenging. I'd rather have a smooth landing than not have a smooth landing. But if you want to smash it in like the guys do in real life, well, then it's actually more realistic. And also for anybody watching this video, this is a firing range that I've built on the Cold War Germany map. I'll be using it for a couple of missions uh, in the future. For any Patreon supporters, please feel free to check out the mission. I will make it available for you. Thank you very much for your support. As always, I will link all the mods and everything that is required. There isn't actually too many in this particular case um, to run the mission. And you will get access to it via my Google Drive as always if you're a Patreon supporter. So thank you so much for that. And thank you everyone to watching this video. If you have any comments regarding how to set up the controls in a helicopter, uh, perhaps better than the way I've explained it, please feel free to comment down below and maybe you'll help out a lot of other people as well. So with that said, thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully I shall catch you in the next one. Adios.